All right, welcome to What's the Deal with Bitcoin? We're going to be doing, oh, three or four conversations about this thing that's in every headline, Bitcoin. And we have a cryptocurrency expert with us, Marcus Sakamoto. And first of all, Marcus, start by telling me as simply as you can, one or two sentences, what's Bitcoin? Well, Jimmy, Bitcoin's a bit complicated. It's, it's technology, really, and it's new technology. It was created out of nothing by people we don't know. So it's a bit <laughs> mysterious. <laughs> Well, that doesn't sound shady at all. <laughs> and the only reason it exists is people have confidence in it. Okay, so it's all kind of a confidence game. That's, that's... Absolutely, just like the U.S. dollar, just yeah. like our government, just like everything else in the world. We don't have confidence, nothing's going to turn the world. Okay, so this is a con game, literally, a confidence game. So, <laughs> but th those can be good, right? It is a confidence game because, you know, without the confidence, nobody's going to buy it and it's going to be basically worthless. So. Okay. And enough people have agreed that it's reached some critical mass. And so is there an analogy, though? Is this like the ability to kind of morph currency with email or I mean, wh how are we thinking about this? Because it seems like it's mostly used for online transactions. You can't go into 7-Eleven and say, I want that stick of gum. Here's some Bitcoin. Well, no, what we call it is a network effect. Basically, think of a telephone. One telephone is useless, right? Mm -hmm. Two is mm -hmm. great. You could call your girlfriend or something. But let's say you have five telephone, 100 telephone, 5,000 telephone, 10,000 telephone. And that's what's happening with Bitcoin is that the network effect is growing. So we have more and more people using it, more and more stores using it. And basically, in the near future, everybody will be using it. Wow. Bold prediction. So now, part of the reason it's so fascinating is because it has skyrocketed in value. Give me a sense of what it was worth when it was launched and, and where it's come. Oh, it's crazy. When it was launched, it was less than a penny. And then just think, this January, it was $1,000, okay? And today, it's over $12,000. So it's, it's absolutely, absolutely crazy. And, then, and I think that's what's feeding the frenzy with the media. It's gone up so fast, it's gone up so popular, Okay, but, and this is where it gets crazy though, is, is it an investment? Is it a currency? Was it built to be a currency and it became an investment? How, how did this all morph? Well, it's evolving to become a currency. Right now, it's not a currency. Right now, it's not an investment. Right now, basically, again, it's still a confidence. So for all we know, it could end up to be a Ponzi scheme. But we, and then the more people get involved, as we speak about this network effect, the more, the more telephones we get out there, the more it's going to have a real life to itself. But I personally think in the future, we will all have some kind of Bitcoin wallet or some kind of cryptocurrency that we'll be trading with. Having these paper money, what we call the fiat, will be long gone by our time, probably by the time we have grandkids. Right, but okay, here's where I get confused. This is, this is something I just want to get at. People think of something that grows as an investment and they think about it as, okay, it started small, but it gained value, right? Or you think of currency and you think about it started with barter. You know, I really want a cow, but all I have is chickens. So I'm going to give you seven chickens for your cow or whatever. And people decide on an agreed upon value, right? But this is neither really. It's, it's not being used to transact much, is it? Or is it? Well, it is being used to be on transact. On record, which what they call the first official Bitcoin trade was done, I think it was May 22nd, 2010. So about seven years ago. So one guy, he did, basically, we didn't have the technology back then. One guy put it on some blog, I want two Papa John's pizza. And that was about $25. And, you know, just try to guess how many Bitcoins he paid for those two Papa John's um, pizza. At the pizza. time? At that time, uh, ten year, uh, seven years ago. Seven years ago? I mean, he probably had to pay for 25 bucks in U.S. dollars. I don't know. If they were only pennies, he probably had to pay a few hundred Bitcoin, right? A little more. He paid about 10000 10,000 Bitcoin? So seven years ago, 10,000 Bitcoin was worth about $25. Now, Jimmy, if you kept those 10,000, you know how much money you have right now? No, how much? $120 million. Those are some expensive pizzas. I hope he got the anchovies. <laughs> I hope he got everything. But more important, the person who sold the, sold the pizza, right? The guy who delivered it to him, he's the one who's happy if he held any of that Bitcoin, if he kept any of that Bitcoin. All right, so now I just have some random questions because the analogies people have in their minds are either when they think investments, they think stocks, when they think currency, they think dollars, right? So let me ask you some things. Like stocks sometimes gain a lot of value and they gain so much value that they split. 
Has Bitcoin ever split? Split? Bitcoin doesn't need to split. Something very unique about it is like if you want to buy Amazon or you want to buy Google, they're both over a thousand dollars. So, so in order for you to buy one Amazon or one Google, you need over a thousand dollars. But Bitcoin, you could buy partial, you could buy fractions of it. So even though Bitcoin is trading about twelve thousand dollars, you could buy five dollars worth of Bitcoin. You could buy fifteen dollars worth of Bitcoin. You do not have to buy twelve thousand dollars worth of one Bitcoin. The the splitting, the reverse splits that we talk think about in the stock world, we do not need that in the Bitcoin world. Is there any kind of like, I think U.S. dollars, right? There's the Federal Reserve or the SEC. What is the governing body of Bitcoin? Well, that we're going back to the blockchain um, technology. Basically, there is no governing body. This blockchain makes it a decentralized system. So by decentralized, meaning exactly opposite. There is no central government. There is no one person controlling the money. There is nobody who could say, you know, Jimmy, let's put, let's, Let's create some more Bitcoins. So I don't know if you know, but there's only 21 million Bitcoins that will ever, ever, ever be produced at, at the end of the day. 21 million. And, and I see every time I see a media story, they show that like gold coin with the Bitcoin symbol on it. Are there physical coins sitting in a vault somewhere? Ah, remember when I first told you it's technology, it's built out of thin air. Unfortunately, there's nothing we could hide under our pillows right now. So people just use that as a symbol, but it, it doesn't exist. No, it does not exist. There's nothing you could touch. There's nothing you could smell. There's nothing you could put in an envelope. It's all in the, in the sky and sort of in wow. the electronic world that we live in. So again, it's a confidence. Okay, brain's exploding here. So let me get my head around this. I'm going to summarize. This is something created out of thin air based on technology. There is some sort of encrypted ledger online, right, that, that has these long strings, I imagine, of data that, that demonstrate ownership of stuff or transactions of stuff. And there's no governing body. It's complete, completely disintermediated, completely decentralized. And everyone's just basically wishing the same thing about it. And that's what gives it its power. Jimmy, that was an excellent explanation. I think you could hit it on the nose. That's a, uh, you, my friend, are the, now, now the expert. You don't need me anymore. All right. I, well, join us next time. We're talking about unicorns as currency. This is very scary and exciting, too, because I want to believe in unicorns. I do, that's, that's why I'm wearing the purple exciting. shirt. Wow. Okay. Are you willing to hang with me next time? Because we want to yeah. we bring viewers back, and we want to have you uh, tell us all about Bitcoin, how to buy it. Because we talk about Bitcoin, but like, how do I get in the game? Will you come back for that? Absolutely, Jimmy. When you join us next time, we're going to talk, we're actually going to open up what? Uh, what kind of an account are we going to open, Marcus? We're going to open up a wallet. We're going to open up a wallet. Normally, when I open up my wallet, moths fly out. But we're going to open up a crypto wallet, and I'm going to buy me some Bitcoin, baby. See you then.